What's good guys? Welcome back to episode 22 of the career mode. We're back again for another episode today. Three games to feast your eyes upon with other things added in there. We're so close to January too, so we're going to be jumping into that window. Now, bear in mind, we don't have lots and lots of money, but we might be able to make something happen if one or two players leave the club. That is the aim. We have a very, I'd say, stacked squad right now, and there's a lot of players here who maybe are not playing enough games and so should potentially be moving on. So we'll see what's going to happen in this window. Obviously, I don't exactly know what's to come as this is pre-recorded. I only know what's happened in the initial little bit of the first window. So you guys have got some stuff to look forward to is all I'm going to say. But we kickstart the episode off against Liverpool. As you guys know, we fell to a defeat. It's our first defeat of the season as well in the last one after we lost a really frustrating defeat, may I add. To Manchester City. So they were the side that uh, stopped our unbeaten run. So we've got one defeat so far in the Premier League. We're looking to make that the same after this game against Liverpool. I don't want to start to get into a run of games where we begin to lose quite a few. So following the win against Burnley, we'd like to make it two out of two with a game against Liverpool here at the Amex. We started off really well. Vinicius Jr. with an initial shot on goal, which went just wide of the corner. Now, I will say this. I was incredibly salty last episode as well. Um, I did title it playing against 12 men is hard. You guys got to understand, right? I was salty as hell after that game and after the uh, the overall episode, the way it went. So, yeah, in hindsight, me, Salty DJ, is uh, is funny. But at the same time, I'm trying to not let it get to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just got to just gotta dig deep and just do what we can to try and get ourselves a win out of the game. So, I've also kind of got to, you know, realize when I'm being incredibly lucky. And this this right here... My days, I do not know how on earth this actually went in the back of the net. Like, it was a joke. It was a joke of a goal. And like I said, I have to recognize when I'm getting incredibly lucky. And this was one of those scenarios you can see. Like, the defensive header just hits my player. It bounces back. Keeper punches it straight out to Brahimi. He scores to make it Brighton 1, Liverpool 0. So, incredible luck on our side there to go 1-0 in front. But to be fair, we were the better side here. We were dominating the play. And it's not down to the fact that... Liverpool are by no means a bad team and they have got a good side here. The issue was they're struggling this season. They're down near the bottom side of the table. So this side that they've got is certainly underachieving. So if we'd have gone on to lose this, yes, in hindsight, wouldn't have been, you know, a massive surprise because their team was still decent. But the way they're playing at the moment, it suggests that we should be winning this game. So I was quite glad to get the 1-0 win, even if it was the way that it did happen there. Um, like I said, it was incredibly lucky, the goal. I'll take it with both hands. You've just got to say, when your luck's in, it's in like that. So I'll quite happily accept the goal going in the way it did. Following that one, we face West Ham United in one of two games to come against them. And no, this isn't both of the semi-final double leg here coming up because we have one of them in the league. We face West Ham in the league. Then we play them in the, uh, the Carabao Cup semi-final leg one. Then we have a break between the next one because we face Newcastle. Then we play leg two. So we've got... Three games against West Ham in the space of about six total games overall. So you are about to see quite a lot of games against the same team here in West Ham. I've only decided to put two in today's episode for you. So you'll have to wait and see what's going to happen in the rest of them. But uh, I've got to say this, like we didn't start off good. I was playing some horrendous football overall. Just couldn't defend. They were hounding on my goal for the first 10, 15 minutes of this game. Just was not clearing our lines. And uh, we were quite lucky, actually, to not be 1-0 down after the first sort of 10 minutes. But it was the way the goal went in that I felt so hard done by. Then again, like I said, I've got to recognise when I get lucky. We got it against Liverpool. So, I mean, me falling down in the box with, I think it was Rabiot or Arata, one of the two of them. Then it kind of bounces back to West Ham. Philippe Henderson gets through and he smashes it in the top corner. I just have to accept it, you know. Like I said, we get lucky sometimes. They're going to get the same sort of look. There it was, Rabio kind of falling over. The West Ham United player who was already going down. It's just unfortunate. And that's the way the ball went in. So, like I said, I was angry at the time. But looking back, you just have to accept that sometimes you get the look and sometimes you don't. But we weren't behind for that much as Andres Pereira curled us back on level terms. And this is, again, one of the moments that I want to highlight a little bit of luck coming our way. Because we were 49 minutes played. Four minutes, 40-something seconds over the 45th minute when there was actually only supposed to be two minutes injury time. So we were about two and a half minutes over the allotted time slot there when we put that one in the back of the net. 
Referee, you're not doing your job good enough, I'm afraid, because you should have already blown that whistle. West Ham, though, fought back hard, and they wanted something out of the game. Now, here, I was going to make a change, okay? Lewis Dunk blocks a shot, and initially, I'm thinking, well done, Lewis, let me make this change now. So I'm bringing off Pereira, bringing on Pascal Gross, thinking to myself, here we go, let's make this change. Came out of this to find the referee appointed to the penalty spot. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm not going to make a comment this episode. I'm not going to say anything. But uh, that, that, is that a penalty? I'll let people deliberate that. Um, Zaza stepped up for West Ham. Sent us the wrong way. And it was back to West Ham United leading the game. Two goals to one this time. <sighs> I mean, ref, 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 ref. Royally screwed us there. Um... But that's all I will say about it. We continue on with the highlights. Nevertheless, 15 minutes to go here. Pascal Gross picks up the ball. He finds Ollie Watkins. He lays it off towards Adrian Rabio, And it was Brighton back on level terms at two apiece here with 15 minutes to play. I was feeling confident. I felt like we were going to go on and find another one. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I didn't know what I was doing with this celebration. I just kind of was running around like a headless chicken. But at least we got ourselves back in level terms. Because I tell you right now, if we were to lose the game to that penalty... It's just one of those moments where I don't like it, but I have to accept it, you know? And if we'd have lost the game because of it, it would have really tilted me. But I've got to say, the heart determination we showed was good. Because after we went 2-2, we were able to make it 3-2. Pascal Gross, the substitute, would come on in between the time of us giving away that penalty and them taking it. Slotted home to make it 3-2. And that kind of made me feel like, listen, justice is somewhat done. I personally didn't feel it was a penalty. Like I said, I'm not going to make too much of a comment on it and, uh, and that such. But uh, to say that we gave it away, we could have so easily at that point thrown the game away. We didn't. We kept composed. We kept ourselves cool-headed and we were able to bring the game back and win it 3-2. Says a lot about this team this year because last year we'd have gone on to lose that 100%. We wouldn't have won this game. We would have gone on. We'd have lost that. And I'd have been going to you guys, unfortunately, not a lot I can do. And that might have been the difference from us winning the league and finishing second like it was last year. This time around, obviously, we're still playing Ultimate Difficulty. I feel like they might have patched a few things on Ultimate Difficulty as well. I don't know if you guys play it, but it did feel a little bit more tough when I was playing this episode. I'm not going to lie, I did feel like it was a little bit harder than it has been in previous ones. And I don't know if that's just down to me not playing the greatest FIFA in the world or a few of my players not having the greatest time of things. Balotelli at the moment hasn't hit the heights that he started off with. He's, uh, he's waiting to still, still score a couple more goals. He's uh, in a bit of a drought, if you will. So that 3-2 win, I was glad to get it. And like I said, uh, last year we'd have probably lost that, and it might have been a different case entirely. We're in the transfer window at this point. We started to get a few offers for players. We got one for Retzos, who I'm not totally convinced about. Obviously, we signed him. I think it was from Bayer Leverkusen we signed him for, uh, from, the Greek defender. Initially, when I came in, I was like, he's going to be here for a long time. But I just feel like he hasn't kind of got into life in the Premier League the way I would have hoped. So I tried to counter the offer back. I think it might have been Dortmund who came in for him. They weren't interested in the counter offer, so I was quite happy to keep him at the club from what they were actually offering. But then we had an interesting one for Pascal Gross from Huddersfield, a man who is 28 years of age, scored the winner against West Ham in that last game there. We decided to counter their offer and say, I think it was 18.5 in the end to, uh, to David Wagner and, of course, Huddersfield Town. Didn't it think they'd accept it? He came back after that one and said, listen, I'm quite happy to pay that. So, all being well, Pascal Gross will be leaving the club here and joining Huddersfield for a fee of £18.5 million as we win against Bradford in the FA Cup first round or something like that. Well, the third round for us, obviously, but uh, our first real time that we were in the competition this year um, by four goals to nil. So, like I said, £18.5 million. I, what, I, see, the thing is... I like Pascal. I think he's got. I think he's a great addition to have in your club. But for that kind of money, did I do good business? I let you guys decide that. You know, it's over to you. I mean, I feel like I did, but at the same time, we are going to miss him. So there is that little bit of me that thinks to myself, I should have possibly rejected that deal. Nevertheless, it is going to be eighteen point five million coming in if he does in fact go to Huddersfield, but we're going to have to wait and see that one to come. Obviously, we're in the transfer window now in January, so we do have the ability to make some pre-contract signings happen. I know one player currently who has a contract expiring at the end of the season is Anthony Martial. We're going to touch upon that at a later stage, but uh, keep in mind he does have his contract expiring at the end of the season. So if you want to see him join us, hit me up with a comment in this episode. I said to you guys, like I said, I will return to this at a future, future episode to kind of give you guys a full talk about it and then maybe a poll, but 
just be thinking about it now so you guys can make a decision later on down the line. We went into the second game of the episode against West Ham, the first leg of the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. And very similarly to that of when we fell a goal to nil down against them in the Premier League, we were 1-0 down against them in the Carabao Cup semi-final at the London Stadium as well. So things didn't change. We started off exactly the same way as we did against them in the Prem. And Pedro Obiang headed them in front to make it 1-0. I couldn't do a lot about this. It was a great ball whipped in and he just rose ahead of Artur and it was uh, in the back of the net. So, yeah, that's what you get for having a mismatch. Artur not going to win that header. Felt a little bit harsh though that Frankie Brown possibly didn't make the save. Into the second half we go. Rabio lays in on a plate and there is Super Mario who hasn't been on the score sheet for quite a while. Getting on the end of Rabio's pass to make it 1-1. So we weren't convincing. We weren't brilliant like we weren't in the game against them in the Prem. But at least we were back in the game. One apiece. And of course, this is double leg. So whatever happens in the first leg, we don't have to worry about it too much until we go into that second leg. So even if we were to lose this or, or draw this game, we still have uh, that second leg to fall back on if we need to do so. But I would like to think we'll get the job done after the first leg. And of course, we are going to be playing some double leg football to come as well in the Champions League after getting through as group winners in that one, we have Dortmund to face later on down the line. We were back on the uh, front foot very quickly after finding the equaliser. We sent through Yassim Brahimi no more than three minutes after we managed to get ourselves back on level terms. Did we fire in a second to make it 2-1 to Brighton? So it's exactly the same scenario as it was in the Premier League. We fell behind. We were able to bring it back and we were able to get ourselves in front potentially winning the game but it's a bit of a different way now because where we were obviously 1-1 in the last one they then got that penalty make it 2-1 then we scored obviously a couple of goals to bring it back and make it 3-2 this time around we were the team in front and then an unbelievable strike from Aaron Questwell oh, it's just I can't even begin to tell you when this went in I was just sat there, open mouth, thinking, what a goal. What a goal. I'm quite happy to have this go in and has conceded this straight from the corner. Finds him on the edge of the area. He just takes one touch and unleashes a left-footed volley in off the post to make it 2-2. And things, things got worse. It got worse. Like, they were through. And my intention here... I knew Philippe Anderson was going to put that ball in, so I only had one option, and that was to take him out give him a penalty and potentially save it. I know that's bad sportsmanship, but at the end of the day, you've got to do what you've got to do to win the game. It didn't matter because Brozovic would score the spot kick to give it West Ham 3, Brighton 2. But twice in two games now, we'd given away penalties against West Ham and they'd scored both of them. One of them was Zaza, the other one was Brozovic. It is what it is. We were 3-2 down. We were the team that came back to win 3-2 in the Premier League. They're going to be doing the complete opposite to us. In this game here, giving us a taste of our own medicine. And in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup leg one, we have been defeated by West Ham United by three goals to two. But like I said, we still have a semi-final second leg to fall back on. So, worst case scenario is that we have to win that one there. That's all we've got to do. We've just got to win the second leg against them in the next episode. And hopefully that will be enough to take us through to the final of the Carabao Cup. But guys, that is going to be it for the end of the episode today. Thank you so much for watching. It is a little bit delayed because I was out of a, co uh, a uh, refereeing course this morning. So it is a little bit delayed, but hopefully you guys understand that. And we'll be back again with another video from 4 p.m. tomorrow for you all to enjoy. If you're under around here and like what you see, the subscribe button is down below. You can click that and follow me on the channel. Alongside it is a notification bell. So you can click that and be notified whenever a video goes live. Until next time, guys. Adios.